I think we'll start out with some woodwind stuff. As far as cleaning woodwinds, a little bit more difficult than some of the other instruments. Pads come into play with it a little bit, as well as some of the chemicals that you're going to use. You got to be cautious just so that you're not using a chemical that's going to damage the wood, damage plastic, or cause problems with the pads where they'll deteriorate the pads and make them sticky. So we'll just kind of generally go over some very simple basics on how to go and manage through all those little things so that we're not going and damaging all of the ins and outs of the instrument that actually make it work correctly. Um, do you want to start out with like some swabs? Yeah, let's start out with some swabs. Let's start out with uh, start out with the clarinet. That's like uh, that's the most normal that we have and that everyone knows about. And with the clarinet, what we're going to do is we're going to think about uh, uh, the only thing we need to worry about is getting the moisture out. Now, a swab. I guess first thing with the swab is what we have a whole bunch of different things. We have to stuff it. We have the normal. This isn't a clarinet, the normal silk type swab. And we also have the, the cotton swab, all kinds of different things. I don't really care what you use so much. Uh, if I'd recommend one over the other would be the silk, just because it is the gentlest. And the thing to remember about a swab is that it is, it's there to catch the big stuff and it's there to spread everything out enough that it is going to let everything else dry quickly and efficiently to keep the, the moisture out of the instrument and out of the off of the pads. So as well keep going with the stuff it real quick. Great invention. Great invention. We'll show it off take one. Yeah. Um, Great invention of the idea of putting it through the instrument and taking it back out. It'll do exactly what we were just talking about. It'll spread everything out to the point where it's going to dry quickly and efficiently. The one problem with it is the whole design is to keep them in the instrument. So what we're doing is basically putting all that moisture right back in the instrument or keeping it in the instrument, depending on how you want to look at it. That's not always the best thing. That's that's going to get, going backwards from, from our end goal. So the best way, if you're going to use a stuff it, is to just go ahead and run it through the instrument and then take it back out and store it in a separate location. Now, with the clarinet, let's might as well go through some of it, right? Oh, here's another one. Here's the, the Volcoin swab as well. This is more of a chamois swab. Like, like I said, any of them will do fine. Let me show over there so yeah. I can see it a little bit. I can't get into it. Here, I'll open this up. <laughs> Go ahead and show them like, how the shove it works inside that a little bit. Maybe where it goes through the tone holes and stuff, you can do it with that one that's cut open too. Are these in the picture? Huh? Are these in the picture right now? No, I'm just a little bit. So with this shove it, basically just run it through. Just run it through the instrument and that, that'll, that'll be good for all. And whenever you're done, if you want to go ahead and, and wipe off the corks, wipe off the inside of the tenon. Same thing with the, uh, the regular swab. Now there's a couple different things here. And I will, I'm not going to sit here and say, this is the right way, this is the wrong way. I'm going to give you a couple different options. And whenever people are talking about swabbing out a clarinet, a couple different ways they go about doing it. One, this is going to be hard to do with this camera. It shove it through the uh, through through the belt. That's a great idea because then you have your weight, and then you turn it around. Maybe. Yeah. And then you turn it around and pull it up through. Now the whole idea, slowly pull it up through. Never mind, we're gonna end up getting it stuck. The whole idea of that is to make the, the moisture go back out the same way. I'm more of the, in the idea that as long as it gets spread out so it'll dry quicker, that's, that's the goal that I'm looking for. That's what I wanna see. Now that is if you wanna leave it together. Uh, whenever you're getting ready to tear it apart for the evening or whatever, tear it all apart. 
do it, you do each each piece individually, and that way you can go through and and do wipe out the tenons as well. Put everything in the case, so then it it it'll it'll dry easier in the case. I think what's important too is as we're going up through the instrument, whenever you start at the larger end, going up to the small end, you're going to go and you're going to compress that swab down so that it actually will fit into all the areas. If you come from the other side, you're a little bit more prone to not expanding through the inside of the instrument to go and actually swab it out. And a little bit more prone to kind of hit some of these troublesome areas where yeah. like you're looking at like things that are going into the clarinet uh, and these little areas there have sharp edges as well as they're just a little bit tighter. So it'll help pull that swab a little bit tighter to get past these areas. And what he's saying with, with that was going through the top. And so if there is more to stick out at that point in time, in case it does get caught on say the register vent or, or the, the, the thumb. And that's the same here for like an oboe. It gets a lot tighter as you're going up through the top. Very, very difficult to pull in from the top of the instrument to go down through it. Best to start out at the larger side and actually pull your swab all the way up through the top, less prone to go and actually cause problems through the instrument itself. And those areas too, that are very important is like wiping out your tenons, the insides of your tenons, like he was saying before, like get into all those areas too, wiping out excess moisture, that kind of stuff. Those are areas where you're gonna get a lot of mold and different things like that, it'll kind of, get into those tough to reach spots as well as they'll cause you problems later on down the road. Whenever you get excess grease, different things that'll build up on the inside, all that kind of stuff. Um, maybe we'll talk about what cleaners to use. Sure. Um, Want to go over some of these guys then? All right, this is this is the, the big cure all right here. This is the one that we're gonna refer to most because most everything has a bit of this in it. Now we, we say 70% is the one we're showing here, mostly because 70% is the one that's recommended because of the actual water content. This the 30% that is that 30% that is kind of kind of changing things. That is what think of that 30% of the of uh, the water as what is moving into to for the disinfect. It's the carrier. It's moving the the. The alcohol into it. You could use a a uh, stronger alcohol, say a ninety one percent, but it actually because it doesn't have that carrier, it doesn't penetrate and, and move into to disinfect as, as nearly as well as what the seventy percent does. As well as the seventy percent is just a nice nice way to go around if you're moving making it other cleaners with it. Some of the other cleaners that we use around the shop too, or we actually go and sell here in the shop, is we have like. Uh, brand new cleaner, more ammonium based, as well as uh, a, a cleaner that's also peroxide based. These work great with all kinds of different types of materials, uh, as well as, you know, not to damage the instrument and disinfect at the same time. One of those problems that you always run into is instruments that are made from like hard rubbers and woods, different things like that. So these types of materials you want to be very cautious on how much of the, you know, chemicals you're actually putting on them because they'll kind of discolor them. It may make a smell that is just undesirable or even just make it taste a little bit weird, like on your mouthpiece and different things like that, whenever you oxidize those types of materials. Um, I'll keep going with some of that yeah. uh, other instruments. The, uh, like, sure the green stuff on the hard rubber is not oh not good. well yeah and i guess one of the things that we were just talking about too is alcohol based items so our green stuff uh, as well as just regular alcohol those will really oxidize uh especially hard rubbers sometimes they'll damage wood they're going to remove a lot of the oils off of the wood different things like that so sometimes these light cleaners like we were talking about that maybe have a little bit more water or have a, like use peroxide or ammonia, they're actually gonna do less oxidation. Like you can see on this item here, this is where just the moisture from you playing it as well as uh, those types of things have just oxidized on the outside. So with that, 
whenever we're going to clean those types of items. Sometimes it works best to just have something that's not alcohol based just because it really won't, you know, really oxidize them quite as quick. Um, as far as cleaning out the insides of like mouthpieces and stuff like that. So well, that was course, the one thing I didn't bring up. Whenever you're cleaning out a clarinet, take a mouthpiece off. You don't want to be running a swab through mm -hmm. through the mouthpiece. Same with the saxophone. Yeah. And with these mouthpieces, you can see there are little hidden areas within these mouthpieces. Tough to get into, different things like that. So we have like our care kits. They're going to have, you know, of course, that swab that we were just showing off. But they also have a good brush that's good to get into your mouthpiece and kind of clean it out. With this, it is one of those things to be cautious of, of the tip of the the um, brush or whatever you're using to clean it out that you don't hit the inside of the mouthpiece whenever you're cleaning because that could actually change the way that the mouthpiece goes in place. So these ones have a little plastic tip on the end just so that they don't damage the inside, but you'd be able to scrub out the inside of that, you know, from both sides that would kind of go and do it so that you have the opportunity to disinfect, clean, get out any of those little pieces that kind of get in there sometimes, as well as uh, just kind of, uh, making sure that that surface is clean and smooth so that the airflow isn't obstructed by anything crazy on the inside of your mouthpiece. Um, I think I was watching a video the other night of a guy that uh, was cleaning out a Barry Sachs and uh, it, it was kind of neat to see what <laughs> all the stuff that came out of it. He took a couple different swabs and uh, basically tied them all together and, uh, and, and fit it down through the bell like you're supposed to and then and then moved it out out through the top, and it, it yeah, there was some nice nice stuff that came out of there. I think with any of those types of swabs and stuff like that, saxophones they have the big curve around the bottom, so that's one of those things you got to get one that has a, a string that's going to be long enough to go through the body of the saxophone. And like he was saying too, some of these instruments are difficult to go and clean, you know, like a berry saxophone around the neck. Uh, different things like that, because you don't want to damage the pads, but you do want to go and clean out anything that's inside the instrument. So uh, as you're going in and kind of looking at what you want to clean out your instrument with, it's very important to just kind of keep in mind the areas that you got to get into, as well as what you're trying to go and protect with it. Um, like here with the saxophone, as you're seeing, you know, you've got the bow. It's a very large bodied instrument too. So you do have to make sure that you have a swab that will expand out into it. So these swabs that we normally carry here, um, some of them have like a brushed end with this brushed end. It's made to expand out on the larger area of the instrument so that you actually can clean all the way around the top, but not get stuck in the top of the instrument, which is a lot more narrow. Again, that's the same thing, same same idea. Take the take the moisture out the way that it that it goes in. Put it in through the bell. Fish the weight down through the through the top. Um, there's also I don't know if you can see it or not. A little octave vent that sticks down in in into the saxophone. Same as the clarinet. Clarinet's a little bit easier to see, but. Uh, so I, think we, I think we have some port. Oh, yeah, you can we'll, kind of catch the, gl the glimmer of it there in the middle. Bit. So that's that's another one of just one of those things to be cautious of. It, it could get caught on that. And there's one inside the neck as well. Uh, you definitely won't be able to see that probably. But in cleaning out the neck, there's definitely very small swabs that you can run through your neck. Start at the large side and go out through the top. As well as uh, we have like some other brushes that are really good for getting inside there. Uh, you know, it, these types of brushes are going to, you'll be able to get into the whole inside of the neck uh, and it will kind of clean it out. Now, one very important thing that a lot of people make the mistake of with any of these uh, types of instruments is they will go and they'll forget to clean their swab. And it's such an important thing to do. Anything that's on the swab itself is going to be put back into the instrument. So cleaning out your swab is really just one of those key points that you got to make sure that you take care of. If you're sick, clean your swab after you're done. If you come into contact with anybody that, you know, is sick, make sure that they're cleaning their swabs because if they swab out an instrument with their dirty swab and run it through the instrument, you're potentially just going and spreading that through all those instruments. 
No, many cleaning disinfectants. Out of, cleaning out a swab like this yes. is, is one that's going to be a little bit difficult. That's why they're a little bit cheaper, so mm -hmm. they're more disposable. Whenever you come to your silk silk swabs, um, this is a Novo swab here. But, but whenever you come to your silk swabs, get like a uh, a delicate uh, washing uh, delicate bag to for washing. Mm -hmm. And you can put it right in there. Yep. Uh, or silk actually is, might even be better to use uh, just a little bit of soap and water. You, you, and, you can uh, hand wash and it. Hand water. wash it. Yeah. But the, uh, like the regular cotton ones, just put them in a delicate bag and that way your, your, that cord isn't going to be uh, getting caught on anything. Yeah, put it in a delicate bag, just run it through with your laundry. And that's the same too with, you know, uh, the um, like shovets and different fluffy swabs like this. You could work soap into these and actually clean them all off so that they're all scrubbed out clean then just leave it out to dry those these will actually go and they can be reused sometimes they'll lose a little bit of their fluffiness after a while or they'll start losing a little bit of the fuzz on them but it is one of those things that's very important to go and make sure that you're swabbing off that and there's many many types of detergents like clothing detergents and stuff like that that are disinfectant detergents for claws and stuff like that be very safe to use on those and especially you want to use something like that because it's going to come in contact with people's skin as well as their mouthpiece different things like that so those things are important to look at if you're going and picking types of cleaners and stuff like that for any of these types of things and one thing that's, that's often overlooked i just bring that up just because of the stuff in itself when the stuff it starts to get old whenever it ages out whenever you know it's time to time to uh, get rid of it is just look in your case. Mm -hmm. You'll see little pieces of it all over your case. You'll see little fuzziness. You'll see little things on your horns start to show up as well. We clean out many, many cases that have <laughs> lots of fuzz in them. Lots of fuzz. <laughs> and that's not a cat, it's a stuffing. Yeah, and that's whenever, you, you know, it's time to kind of move on. The same thing with the, with the case, actually. That's just kind of a little sidebar. Stuff in the case, where is it going to end up? If you have a paper clip in your case, where is it going to end up? In your trumpet valve? It could be something like that. Uh, so there's, there's a quick repair mm -hmm. tip right there. Don't keep the little things in your case. Put those in your purse or <laughs> put them someplace else. A lot uh, of these newer cases mm -hmm. don't have the same pockets that they used to have in the old cases, yeah, where they, they used really to close don't. up and actually hold the item within a closed box. If they have a pocket, they don't have a yeah. lid anymore. Yeah, and that's one of those things to be cautious of. So even a bag inside your case is a smart idea to keep all your small items so that they don't end up inside your horn. Or a protect that usually has a, a yeah. bag or a yeah. pouch on the outside. And those pouches are great so that you don't nick up your instrument. Mouthpieces, especially in, in, in brass instruments, bang around on the instrument, you get little dents and dings. Uh, we find a lot of mouthpieces and mouthpiece caps stuck inside <laughs> alto saxophones. It's one of those things Probably that enough, nice it's to contain. Still, it can still play if there's a there's a hole in the top of the, yeah. the cap. It'll still play. That it just plays really, really out of tune. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing about some of these dirty swabs that you're always looking at is what is a dirty swab? That one's not exactly clean. Not, not exactly clean, but you can see where, you know, we kind of got bright clean up here, but down in here, we got a little, you know, green and that oh. kind of stuff. Time to go and kind of just give that a quick clean so that it's actually not pushing this stuff back into your horn. Because just like any of those types of little pieces of moisture and all that kind of stuff that are just collected on there, it's just going to pull more off of the swab as you run it through your edge. Yeah, that one's, that one's uh, starting to age out. <laughs> I think... Um, as far as some of the other wood ones go, uh, you know, you're definitely getting into some of those clean areas like, uh, like say a bassoon vocal, very small area. Great thing to go and actually have in your kit is just a, a vocal brush. And we'll try to zoom it in here just a little bit, but uh, we actually kind of sell these too. And you're looking at a brush that's small enough to go through and a little, little flex to it. This flexible brush, same thing as you did with your, like your cleaning swab is you're going to go through the larger end of your vocal and you're going to just fish that all the way through. Now, in a bassoon vocal, uh, the, the actual uh, pep that goes through here, it actually goes through into the body of the instrument. So you do need something that's going to kind of get in there. So this brush will be great just to run it all the way through. And whenever she comes out the end of it too, that'll help kind of just clean it out best thing with these types of items just like your other swabs you probably need to run it through a couple times but go through clean out your swab or clean out your your mouthpiece 
clean out your neck, clean out your vocals, probably more often than the rest of the instrument. Those are going to be the critical areas that you want to make sure are disinfected the most because that's going to be direct contact with you. I think sometimes with, um, with the instruments itself, you have a lot of um, areas where you're coming in a lot more contact with salivas. Uh, those types of areas are going to be the critical areas to disinfect. So whenever you're dealing with some of these metal instruments, metal mouthpieces, uh, that, those are the areas you want to disinfect the most. That's one of those things like with the saxophone as well. I mean, uh, we can go over that a little bit. Where, are, are, where is it going to gather? All right, so with the saxophone, well, with the saxophone, obviously it's going to be gathering in a neck. So that's one that we want to want to concentrate on. But with a the body of a saxophone, now we've gone over some of this with you, you before, but so you have your small, small pads at the top of the instrument, your big pads at the bottom of the instrument. But what we have here, no matter what we do, if it's sitting in the case like this, you have a nice cone. If it's if you're playing it, you have a nice cone. Everything is going to gather down towards the bottom of the instrument. So over the course of the life of the pads of the, of, of the saxophone, you're going to be replacing the top, just for, like I said, because they're accepting the moisture the most, and they're the smallest. They're going to wear out quickest in the bottom, just because that's where everything ends up. Um, so that's, that's the like, lowest part of the that's, instrument. That's, that's the All, lowest part. Whenever you're playing, gonna draining that's where it's going to gonna sit at. Yeah. Um, now, I think one of the things, too, that's critical that uh, we just kind of skirted over is cleaning out your flute. Yeah, we didn't really there's do a big There's a big hidden spot in your flute. Now, I have a little cutaway here, uh, only for the simple reason that this kind of, it, it doesn't have the same features that a lot of the... Uh, the clarinets and oboes have where you're going to get stuck on your tone hole. So it's pretty open. But on this instrument here, this really you have, yeah, sorry, you have this small area up here. That's one of those areas that you definitely want to make sure is clean. You're, you're blowing in this end and all of this uh, like area up in here is very difficult to hit. So if you go and you take your standard swap, uh, You'll so kind of see you got a little dead spot. Standard stuff, it same as with the other instruments. Um, you can push it up in there, give it a little twist, pull it back out, and that'll, that'll get up there in there so it will move things around. It'll get in there close. Spread it out a little bit. It'll, yeah, it'll get close. And some people will use a rag on the end of a, uh, uh, an actual rod itself. So this cleaning rod here, as you can see, uh, it's going to have an area that's very difficult to get your, your swab in at the top. Best thing at this point in time, like if you're actually not getting up into that area, is try to see if you can flip it over the top to go and actually get it up closer to the cork. But we have these other nice little brushes that are just great to get up in there. As you can see, it has cotton at the end of the swab too. Whenever you get this up in there, you're going to get up nice and tight up against the head joint cork assembly. That is like that critical area you kind of want to get your moisture out of because that's where any of that type of mold and stuff is going to go and collect whenever you're actually going and having, uh, you know, those types of uh, tough to reach areas in this in this type of instrument. Let's go to the cleaning rod real quick just because this is the one that you all have with the, with the fluid. This here is the metal one, has the little. Yeah, it's the one we on have in our rentals. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's the one, one that has the rentals. But this is just a cloth. This is actually a little bit smaller than this. I don't want to give sizes or anything, but it, you don't want anything too big. But what we're going to do here, see how I just ran that through there a little bit? Okay. Then we're going to run it over top. You're good. Down just a little bit. But there we go. And that way we're going to be hiding any of that metal. So it's not going to go in there and scratch, scratch yeah, you the. Want, uh, you the want to scratch it as well as you're going to yeah, get up yeah. close to that head joint. And we have the head joint here. So what we're going to do, pull back on it. Okay. Pull back on it so you're going to be holding it tight. Run it into the flute. Do a little twist. Pull it back out. 
and you'll see. Is it going to get up? It's not getting a whole way. It's getting real close. Yeah, and you can kind of change that angle a little bit just to get her up in there. Yeah, yeah. You can play with the amount of that you have on here too. Like I said, this is just what we have sitting here, so that's what I'm using. And especially whenever you're passing this instrument around, maybe a different student's going to try it out. There's a lot of uh, people that are going to have instruments that they're going to let try out, different things like that. So those are those critical areas that are just kind of hiding inside that instrument that you might need to take a look at. Um, I think one thing that we definitely need to talk about is the outside of the instrument as far as what we're going to go and do to clean off the outsides of these instruments. So we did a lot with brushes, swabs, that kind of stuff. But most critical is going to be, hey, let's clean out the outside of this instrument, wiping it off. What's best for all these instruments? Flutes, great. Little isopropyl alcohol, you can wipe it off. It's going to take off grease and oil from your hands. Uh, and anything that's on the outside of the horn, you know, like if you're blowing any of that moisture in there, different things like that, those types of items, wipe it off. You're not going to damage anything. It won't discolor it. It'll kind of keep everything clean. Um, I think the more critical is whenever you start getting into, hey, what do we do with lacquered instruments? What do we do with wooden instruments? So just like we were talking about before, you know, with some of these cleaners, you got some of your ammonia based and your uh, um, alcohol based and your hydrogen your peroxide, peroxide, based. peroxide based. So the hydrogen peroxide ammonia, a little bit less like invasive whenever it comes to actually damaging any of those types of items on the outside. Um, won't damage your lacquers. And it also will clean off the wood, clean off the plastics and not go and actually cause problems with them. It'll dry out quickly too. That's that's so, the most important yeah. is to make sure it dries pretty quick after you're done. And the thing with wood as well is you don't want to you don't want to keep that on the wood. It will actually get in there and dry things out if you're not not careful with it. As well as you want to keep that stuff off the pads. So. And they do say whenever you're using any of these cleaners, especially a spray cleaner, that you do want to let it dry on the surface. That's whenever the timing is that they anticipate this this chemical to actually go and disinfect and clean it properly. So you actually would put it on the surface and let it dry. But it is one of those types of things that using those types of cleaners, they're going to have their own timing. And that's what that's what you'll end up using whenever you spray off a mouthpiece or you spray off like the inside of one of the head joints or you spraying off the outside of a barrel, different things like that. Um, as far as cleaning off any of these types of instruments, just a nice cloth, uh, you know, you always come back to a nice, nice cotton, cotton, cotton cloth, old t-shirt material works great, um, even their swab. But, you know, the one thing is, is your swab has other things on it. So sometimes having a clean rag inside your case uh, is a good idea. With these types of things, you always got to be cautious of those pads. You have to be cautious of springs, any of those little pieces that are sticking off because you don't want to throw your instrument out of adjustment just to kind of clean it off. Now, or the, or the front of the front of the pad, like with the fluid, the yeah. problem is just is uh, nudging on the front of the pads by accident. Mm -hmm. So I just want just to be wary of that. So what you're looking at with that area that we're talking about, like whenever you're cleaning around these areas, if you scuff up your pads too much, they're going to fall apart a little bit. So as you're cleaning it, kind of steer clear of the pads. Watch where you're going and actually putting your cloth at so that you're cleaning those areas off, not touching the pads up too much. Um, I think we should really talk about some brass stuff now too, uh, as far as, hey, what's important with the inside of a brass instrument? I think they definitely kind of, they hold a little bit more bacteria and molds in them because I think you're more prone to actually just push that spit in there and they're tougher to swap out. So what do we do? Yeah. Hello, I'm not just a cardboard guy <laughs> sitting over here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brandon. Um, I'm going to switch over here real quick. Sorry. So critical things with brass stuff, you know, we're definitely talking about the inside of these instruments. We're going to kind of show you here a little bit. We've got some dirty stuff and some clean stuff, of course. But it is one of those types of things. Let's get into why these things collect in here. And what, what do we got to do to get them out? It's like one of those things that's really tough to clean yeah. out. So like Mike was saying, and you can see from these pictures here, we have, or not pictures, this is a real tube that we couldn't have. So whenever you play the salts and the acids from your you know, saliva going into the horn, build up on the inside of the instrument. 
So that's what makes all this green corrosion and stuff we build up it. in there. So after we clean it, you know, chemically clean it and run like brass brushes through, this is what your outcome looks like. Now you can keep it looking like this very easily just by after you're done playing, running water through your lead pipe of your instrument. So if you have a trumpet, for example, stick this up here real quick. If you actually take your tuning slide out, you can actually just run water. And those tuning slides do come out when it's clean. You see that? Yeah, when the, yeah, <laughs> they're nice and easy. Um, no, so, you know, you can run water through. Um, that's going to be the biggest way to keep your brass instrument clean is actually just one, keep your mouthpiece clean. And two, the lead pipe or the mouth pipe of the instrument is, you know, the, the first where the, where the, you know, where everything's going to get stuck and then it moves through the instrument. And the most critical area in this is that mouth pipe. No water around. Hey, the swabs that come inside the kits, they're nice. Swab out the inside of that mouth pipe with the swab that's going to go and fit in there. At least try to help yourself go and keep that as clean as possible. Because like yeah. you're saying, you push stuff through the instrument, then you're going to have further problems. And it just pushes that dirt into the valves. So inside the, the care kits, and you guys probably all seen these before, the snakes. So what Mike was saying, even if you do it dry, you just want to you know, get the snake, go through the through the whole way, pull back the other, and then just like with the woodwinds, you know, maybe do it a couple times. Make sure you wipe off the the outside of this, mm -hmm. just to you know get the stuff off, so you're you know not shoving dirty stuff through. Um, now, brass instruments, like Mike was saying too, are you know they fill up a lot more with you know junk and green stuff and all that stuff but it's they're also you're buzzing in the well yeah because you're buzzing and yeah, your, you know, your mouthpiece goes directly little, in yeah um now they're a lot easier to clean mm -hmm. though than the woodwind stuff there's not a lot to like deal with so when you're doing a you know a trumpet for example you know you just want to take the whole thing apart you can pull out all the slides we'll just pull the slides real quick because it's super easy and there's not a lot of parts properly greased yeah <laughs> properly greased stuff comes out real easy yeah um, so with trumpets, you can give them baths very easily. Uh, you just want to use a warm water with um, some a little bit of soap. Gone dish soap. Yeah. Safe for the ducks. Safe for your trumpet. Um, and it cuts through the grease and everything that's going to be inside your instrument. You don't want to use uh, boiling water because that will actually strip the lacquer off of the instrument. So you want to, you know, just warm water with soap. You can, you know, clean out everything. The big thing with trumpets, though, is, and the other uh, brass instruments, is you do not want to get the felts wet. So you want to try to keep the felts as dry as possible because they will actually swell up over Should time. Take that out. Take those off. And yeah. the felts, so take that off. You just unscrew the top cap or the finger button. Then your top cap comes off, and then your felt can come right off. And all the rest of that can go and be washed. Yeah, out. so you can wash everything as is like this. You just need to make sure, you know, there's Set a hole in the bottom. Yeah, let it all dry. Like some water. Yeah. Um, but yeah, big thing, you don't want to get the felts wet just because they will expand and then it throws off the tuning of the instrument because they swell up and the valves aren't in the line anymore. Yeah, and that's, that's the most critical on these brass instruments is if you change the actual location of that, that valve alignment on there, you're going to go and have tuning problems with your instrument. Uh, it's just not going to play exactly the right way. So take those areas off, then you're going to kind of keep the instrument in good shape. And then real quick, um, I don't know if you guys noticed this, this one has an Amato water key on it. So uh, a little different than the other ones, you know, the regular water key that just opens. So a good way to keep these guys clean is actually, you just want to take some key oil and right in the middle there, you just actually put a little oil right inside the hole at the bottom and then you just work the key and that'll actually keep those flushed out and clean because over time the corrosion sets up on those guys and just you know gets stuck in there um now as far as cleaning out the uh clean off the outside of the instrument um you don't want to use anything um that has bleach in it um that goes for like woodwinds and everything as well the bleach is you know harmful to humans basically and we'll like you know it could mess with the finishes uh like nickel and silver it's harmful to those it'll you know kind of etch the etch the materials 
Um, so you want to just use like a, a mild disinfectant. Um, if anything, you don't have anything else, um, the isopropyl, the 70 percent works great. Uh, you just want to like squirt that on a rag, wipe off your instrument, and then like rag wise, just you know, any kind of rag, mic microfiber. Nice soft yeah, nice cloth. soft cotton cloth, wipe it off. Yeah. Um, then you want to get another rag and wipe off, you know, any of the residual leftovers that are there. Let's talk about one of those one of those hidden areas there too, the, the bottom caps. Well, yeah, yeah the bottom caps, um, the whole purpose of the bottom cap is actually to collect everything that comes through. This is a clean trumpet, so I should have grabbed a gross one for you. But so <laughs> no, when you're playing okay. and you put okay, the right, valve right. oil on, valve oil also cleans the valves um, as well as making the move, but the oil gets on there. So anything that you blow through the instrument gets on the valve, the valve oil actually rinses it off and it collects down in the bottom caps. Uh, so for bottom caps, you just want to take those off occasionally. Q-tip around the inside, you can get all the even the rag that you, you know to. get the stuff out of there. Yeah, it's just one of those areas that if you if you get that dirt in the valve, that's going to cause you a lot of problems. And please remember, uh, we actually have been working on generating a whole bunch of videos on how to clean these instruments and and all that kind of stuff as far as. Uh, any of the woodwind stuff and brass stuff. So we have a really, really good video about cleaning your trumpet. It goes through step by step, how you go and disassemble it, put it back together, clean it out, run all the brushes through it, as well as just like, you know, what order you want to kind of do things so that, you know, you don't have a student or you're not going to go and put in yourself, you know, the valves into the water, different things like that. But it also will kind of give you some pointers on how to put it back together. Because you got like to worry about the valve guys. You don't want to scratch anything as well as just you know how to oil it after you're all done um i think one of those areas too that you want to get into is like of course with the trombone you're gonna go and you have like a really large area where it's kind of easy to get through all the parts but hey how about a french horn a little bit tougher to kind of get into all the hard spots on this guy but critical yeah, so very, yeah very critical. Yeah, same same thing. So for brass instruments, main key is, especially on French horns, you know, unless you're comfortable and confident enough to disassemble the whole valve. We do have a video of, of that, how to, you know, restring your valve after you're done. But the main thing with brass instruments is keeping that mouth pipe clean. Now, the nice thing about the brass instruments is, you know, the main tuning slide goes into that. So you can always, you pull the main tuning slide out and you can run water straight through. Or like we said before, just run your brush straight through. You don't, you know, you don't need to necessarily have the water if you, if you, don't, you don't have it available, but it helps to keep that rush, you know, flushed out. And I think too, Brandon, do you recommend doing like uh, with any, any lead pipe like that, do you recommend going through the, the, the top of the lead pipe or the bottom of the lead pipe? Where the, where the, where the tuning slide is or the mouthpiece is? Um, I would recommend going where the tuning slide is Large, just for most of the time. The it's like for a trumpet, for example, too. If you go through the mouth pipe, it's going to squirt water out of the bottom end where the tuning slide is all over the rest of the horn. So if you can, you know, finagle your way so you have to get through the bottom. Out. Yeah, kind of hold it this way, too, yeah. so that you're not getting water over any of your your stock plate corks, you know, the tops of your valves, that kind of stuff, because then you got all these little areas that you got to go and dry out and all that kind of stuff. That'll keep everything a little bit drier. But yeah, if you just run it through, right through the bottom here. And I mean, it's really difficult whenever you, you just have like a regular sink, but sometimes you just might have to use the mouth pipe, kind of get it up underneath that sink and then, you know, just kind of let it drain out below. Yeah, it's fine if you, get, you know, have to go the other way. Just make sure you wipe off the water and, you know, Get everything off of everything. <laughs> get, get it all cleaned <laughs> off. Um, but you know, with French horn as well, just you know, if you don't want to take the whole thing apart, occasionally just take your slides out, dunk your slides in some warm water. That'll you know help out a whole bunch with all that stuff. Um, and then as far as like cleaners go too, um, just if you have like a spray bottle and just put some you know water with some like Dawn dish soap in that, you can actually you know clean your stuff that way. Just squirt it on a rag, wipe down your horns. The sterosol actually can be used that way as well. Squirt it on a rag, 
wipe off the horn, let it dry, and then you know use and another it, rag to wipe off. And that's again a, that's, a, that's a kind of a good point, and I think we might have skirted over it. I think it's best too, and I'm you guys might think so too. You don't want to spray your cleaner on the instrument. You want to spray your cleaner on the rag to wipe it off because ex all this excess make moisture. Sure you can get it all off. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, you don't want to. Yeah, you don't yeah, want it to be because you're worrying about pads. You're and... worrying about this. And sometimes whenever you let that sit in some of these little hidden areas, if it's alcohol, it may over time kind of eat through the you know, lacquer. It might cause a little bit of etching on there. Or like we were saying with, you know, woodland stuff, you're going to get it on the pads. So spraying it on the rag, then wiping off the outside of the instrument is probably your best way to go. And so basically what he's saying is anything that's on there is going to turn to dirt or yeah. corrode or something at some point in time. So you just want to be careful I mean, how it's going on. Yeah, you see that with saliva all the time because it just, yeah. it'll build up and cake on the outside of the instruments. And that's whenever you get sticky pads. Uh, and even in this case too, like if you get a lot of excess saliva and stuff like that all over the valve system, that's whenever you start having external issues on the valves themselves. Sometimes with these rotary valves, you know, keeping them oiled is you're dropping some oil down the inside. The inside's oiled pretty nice because it's very contained on a French horn. But whenever you get that excess moisture that's kind of getting into those little areas on the outside, that's whenever you start getting corrosion in there and the valve stops working. You find that a lot with any of these types of rotary instruments uh, or any of these types of valves that are on these rotary instruments like a French horn or a trombone. Trombone's pretty easy to clean off just because it's straight. Same thing that you're doing with any of these other ones. Yep, and then big thing with brass instruments, if something is stuck, that's when it's time to send it in. Yeah. You don't want to take like pliers to anything. Um, you don't want to be hitting yeah, stuff with hammers. Like So like if a slide's stuck, generally the slide is stuck because it hasn't been cleaned in a while. You know, so it has all the... Uh, Going back to the small one there. You can see it all the closer. All the... If I can get it to come up. All the buildings. So, you know, that's why the slides are getting stuck is the inside of the, the tuning slide looks like that. The outside of the legs look like that. It's it corrosive. forms a solid, yes. you know. It's salts and all that so, kind of stuff that you're putting in there. It just acts like a sandpaper. One corrosion exactly. against yeah. the other. So if something's like stuck, don't force anything because that's when you, you know, rip your horn apart. And, and yeah, I think like one that. of those things that, you know, most important, especially on any, any of the, the wind instruments, is we're going to talk about like cleaning your mouthpiece so you know yeah uh any any of these types of things great to go and maybe have a, a small container for some of your woodwind stuff um so we have like a little container here we have a bigger container of course like if you're soaking yeah, if you're brass soaking, mouthpieces hey you can toss them in yeah you can dunk them in brass mouthpieces are okay to go the whole way in uh, the woodwind mouthpieces, when they have the cork, that's when you don't want to, you know, really be submerging yeah. the entire soap and water is great. But yeah, just so, soap, just soap and water. Um, Dawn, that's going to disinfect, clean, all that kind of stuff. I know. Uh, so say we're looking at soaking one of your woodwind mouthpieces. Now, this of course is the saxophone mouthpiece. You could put the whole thing in the water, perfectly fine. Scrub her out. Why don't you show how to clean out a couple of those there too? Yeah, I was gonna say, I'll show you the brass ones real quick while you're yeah. doing that. So brass ones, mouthpiece brush. You just wanna, you know, get that in there and then you just in and out a couple times. Same with trombone. That gets that cleaned out. We have a cut off one here. So you can actually kind of see how that gets up in there. And we'll, you know, give it a couple of little twists, pull it back out, good to go. And then, you know, like we said, sterosol, yeah, we isopropyl can... alcohol, you pull it out of the, you know, the water and just, you know, if you want to be extra, you know, extra clean besides just the soap and water, you can hit it with that after you're done too. Let it dry, wipe it off. You can even hit it with before. Like sometimes if you want to remove, to go. if you want to remove that like alcohol from the outside or, you know, somebody was complaining that they just had like a taste that they didn't like or it smelled, it, go in and rinse it off after you're done, go and hit it with any of these types of cleaners here, you know, and then after you're done, go and rinse it off in some water. That'll, that'll clean off a lot of stuff. Now, mouthpieces for woodland stuff, you know, of course you have ligatures and caps, hey, soap and water. Now, with some of the clarinet mouthpieces, bassoon vocals, different things like that, 
cork is waterproof, but it is one of those things, sometimes if you're gonna soak a mouthpiece for a little while, not a bad idea to maybe find a container where you could just stick the tip of the mouthpiece in, where it's actually gonna go and work on some of those bacterias that are just in the tip of the mouthpiece. And that's part that's gonna have the collection of the most molds and bacterias and all that kind of stuff anyway. Um, How long not, do you recommend it sitting? I, I think they recommended like a 10 or 15 minutes 10 or 15 on a lot of the cleaners, yeah. So it's not like a super thing that's really that difficult, but say you're looking at like hard rubber mouthpieces, you might want to do it a little bit less because then they won't oxidize well, quite as much. Because of the, the, yeah. uh, the liquid. But most critical, like we said, soak your mouthpiece. Once you take it out, make sure you're swabbing out the inside. Um, and the more you do it, the less you'll have to let it sit. Yeah, and I think part of part of what you're looking at with a lot of these types of things is you're just you want to make sure that uh, you're getting into all the little hidden spaces. That's where any of these bacteria are going to cause you the most problems. So, uh, little container, soak your woodwind mouthpieces, soak your brass mouthpieces, that kind of stuff. You're going to be good to go. But watch if you're using those Cloroxes. I know a lot of people have Clorox available, but you're gonna go in, like he was saying, you're gonna turn nickels and silvers, they kind of get black. Uh, it could etch a lot of plastics and, and it will really damage the wood because it's gonna, it's just gonna take all that moisture out of the wood. Um, and with a wooden instrument, it's it's oil that you're trying to keep in there that kind of protects it from your saliva as well as anything you put on it. Uh, like, like he was saying too, so if you are gonna use like a Clorox wipe, make sure you get the bleach free ones. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, because you can wipe down the outside of things with that. Um, just, you know, make sure it's bleach free. And then, you know, back to the, you know, wipe it, wipe it off with that and then wipe it down with a clean rag afterwards just to, you know, make sure there's nothing left on there. Let it sit and dry. Yeah. <clears throat> Talk about reeds any at all? No, actually we haven't talked about reeds, reeds yet. Yeah. yeah. All right. Reeds is one of the, no, reeds, reeds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're one of those things. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a wood product. So anything that you put on it is going to dry it out. There's pretty much no way around that. If you're sick, throw your reader away. They're expensive, but they're not that expensive. If you're sick, throw your reader reader away. Sick Get another way one. To handle it. Yeah. Um, Don't share reads. It's, yeah. I mean, as difficult as it might be, they're 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 porous. They're it's just going to you're going to collect bacteria and everything. So. Anything that you, you have on the mouthpiece is going to be, or anything you have on the reed is going to be passed on to the next person who goes and puts it in their mouth. Now, the best way, I don't want to say there is a best way. I'm just going to go <laughs> over with a couple of different ways. Let's see back here, we have the, the scope. Some people will do that. I actually know a lot of, a lot of teachers that will use that as their disinfectant for mouthpieces. Uh, good, bad, I don't, I don't know. It tastes minty fresh. Um, the alcohol. Or the peroxide base. I know some people that'll they'll put the they'll put the reeds into an alcohol and let them sit there, or I'm sorry, a peroxide and let them sit there for that. Um, the alcohol will do some things. I picture in my head anyhow the peroxide is just just a tad more aggressive than yeah. than they. Uh, they say it alcohol. breaks down the cell walls a little bit. So. Well, yeah, that's yeah. why you don't want to do it do it forever. Just mm -hmm. put it in there uh, gently. And like I said, there's nothing you can do about them not drying your reed out. That's mm -hmm. just one of those things. But that is a, a quickly a quick way to just kind of wipe it down a little bit. One thing that's really good about doing, or, or it, that you probably want to do, that will kind of help you out if you had to go and clean it with, you know, any of these products. Uh, if you're using a little bit of alcohol, sometimes that'll burn your lip a little bit. Some people are a little bit more sensitive to it than others, but rinse it off after you're done. Yeah. You know, take it out and then, you know, put it into some water to just go and rinse off anything you kind of put in there. For one, that's going to stop any deterioration in the reed, but like if somebody has a sensitivity to whatever cleaner you're using, you won't go and pass that on. And hopefully you're going you know, to protect your reeds a little bit as well as, you know, they're just not going to damage it. And that's just one of those types of things, like he was saying. It, sometimes you're you're you got a cold for a couple of days, and if you're playing on that read and you do want to save it, you you got to do a little precautions just so that you know you're causing yourself problems and getting more sick. So unfortunately, it's one of those that there is no really good answer for. Yeah, you uh, just kind of have to keep up with it a little bit, a little bit at a time, and, and uh, go from there. And I think too, what we end up seeing a lot of is if you have mold in your case, it gets in your instrument, gets on your reads, all those types of things. So really being cautious of molds and stuff like that that get collected in those soft materials. 
that's whenever you're going to go and cause yourself the most problems with any of any of the functionality or keeping it clean on the instrument. Um, we see a ton of instrument cases and stuff like that that just are moldy. Sometimes it's difficult to find a case that fits an instrument if you have an odd instrument. But it is one of those things that we've been definitely working on making sure that we get as much of that clean as possible. Best things for you is, you know, using uh, a peroxide cleaner, uh, something that's going to go and it, like this one says deodorizes and cleans. Uh, there's some other like carpet cleaning type of things that will disinfect that kind of stuff. You want to use a low sudsing type soap product. So that's where hydrogen peroxide is good. Uh, or even Dawn. Yeah, Dawn even works Dawn well. You, but you, you do like have to, grease. yeah, you want to make sure you rinse it out. Yeah. Yeah, because it, Dawn, it, it does, it, it leaves a little bit of a residue. Sometimes that residue can go and kind of mold back up on you because it'll retain a little bit of moisture inside those fibers. So clean it out as good as you can. Best thing for any of those types of instruments is outside in the sunlight. Yeah. And I know here what we've actually stepped up with as soon as we found out all these Corona things were going on is we needed something to go and actually disinfect some of these areas that we have a very difficult time with. And it's that UV light. The UVV is what we're using to go and disinfect and finalize all of our cleaning processes here. And we made a box for it. That's that sunlight outside. So if you don't have something like that available, hey, outside, leave it outside on a nice sunny day. It's gonna help eliminate molds and bacteria within the case. Slowly. Yeah, it's slowly. That that is the that is it does. Yeah. But it still is gonna help you the best. Use a nice cleaner, let it dry out out in the sunlight. It's gonna go and help you maintain those instruments, kind of keep everything from growing inside the horn, which is what you really want to stay away from because that's the part you're putting up in your mouth. And most important, watch the weather forecast. Yeah. <laughs> don't, yes. don't ask us how we know. Yes. <laughs> it definitely, uh, it, it's a longer process whenever it rains and you have your case outside. <laughs> so I think next up, we kind of have uh, some string stuff to go over. Um, it, there's there's definitely a couple key points on any of these types of instruments that are a little bit more delicate than some of our other finishes or some of our other instruments. You know, whenever you have a nice metal instrument, that kind of stuff, um, you you have to go and worry about like just disinfecting the outside, and it's kind of some of the processes you want to do with this too. But with wood, lacquer finishes. Uh, even the strings in the in on a bow, you got the hair. That's those are those critical points that you kind of want to be cautious of. Yeah. Um, but first and foremost, you definitely want to wash your hands before you play the instrument and after you play the instrument. That's like a number one easy precaution that you can do and have your students do as well, because that's going to really eliminate any initial germs that are on your hands. And Don't lick your instrument either. You know, it's one of those things. Yeah, you don't need to do that with a string <laughs> instrument. <laughs> um, if you want, you can show them right over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, with uh, with all of our string stuff, of course, you know, like I said, you got um, just a, a sensitive yeah. lacquer finish. Okay. You got wood on the top, so you know, let's kind of go over a little bit of that. Yeah, you don't really want to get any alcohol on the finish because or really any chemicals because they're going to, you don't know how they're going to react. It could be a solvent for it and they're going to cause a finish to like bubble up or, you know, have some kind of reaction. That, so you basically want to keep the spray alcohol onto a rag and then you're going to want to, you know, wipe the chin rest off there. You can wipe the strings off, even if you want to like loosen a string and, you know, go like this up and on it, you're going to get it pretty much clean. And then um, the areas that you can, you can wipe with an alcohol um, on a cloth. It's going to be the the areas of wood that aren't finished, and like that's going to be the chin rest, the fingerboard. So you can you can go ahead and do those. What do you have to do after that? Do you have to like oil it again? Yeah, you're going to want some kind of wood oil. Um, I don't know that any in particular are going to be better or worse than others. It's just better to have something that you can apply on there because the alcohol is going to dry it out. Even though it evaporates quickly, the wood will look dried out. And so you'll just want to- So case scenario would say it's like a mineral oil? 
Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I even like furniture oil will probably work for wood furniture. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of cleaning you're going to need to do. Um, if you do get alcohol onto the finish, it's not that big of a deal. You just want to make sure you wipe it off right away. And if you have some kind of polish that you can put down on the wood or on the finish, it's going to help out too. I, I know sometimes I've seen like somebody put like just a cloth over top of it just to kind of protect that area so that they don't. Yeah, I mean, if you hit it. if you have the strings off, you can just like even if you have another cloth then, other than the one you're wiping things off with, just put it under there. Yeah, that'll protect the finish you know? just in case you you happen to go and be a little clumsy with where you're putting that, and then you won't get it on those areas. Sure. Um, so what really about, the goal would be just to make sure that there is not a buildup of anything, just just like with some of the other instruments that we were talking about, to make sure there's not a buildup, because anytime there's a buildup, it's just a place for more dirt and 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 uh, bad things to, to collect. Exactly. And like the more you wipe things off after you're done, like you're not going to have any buildup, like they're going to stay cleaner longer yeah. too. I mean, and aside from like germs and that, there's going to be less rosin and buildup on things, um, you know, whatever, however, your sweat reacts to the, the strings, you know, it's, it's going to have a less um, corrosive to your strings because you're wiping it off all the time. It's, it's probably a good thing just to do in general, regardless of what coronavirus, but yeah, what um, we use to go and clean off the strings here. Do we use like alcohol to go and clean off the rosin and stuff like that? Or um, I use, I do use lighter fluid like NAFA to okay. clean and that's really good at breaking down um, any buildup on strings. Quickly. Uh, it actually also, you can use the alpha on the finish and it doesn't really damage it or anything. That's the good thing about it. Um, so that breaks down rosin pretty well. And also like any stuff on the strings, like if you have metal, that's kind of like starting to tarnish that it's good for that too. How about like, um, any of the like areas, areas that are like, uh, on the bow itself, what's different with the bow? Uh, so with the bow, you could basically like use alcohol as well, and you could use that on, um, you know, where you're going to be grabbing the bow with, with, on the frog or on the grip right here. You can wipe that off. Yeah, lift that up a little bit so you can see. You too. Too. So like wiping off the frog and and the grip here, and what also about, the screw. What about that hair then too? Is that like a critical area? Like I mean, I know you're not necessarily touching it, but it is one of those things. Do do you have to clean it off at all? I really want to worry about cleaning off the hair okay. too much because like alcohol can definitely cause you some problems yeah. there. So the hair is where the more the build up, the better really. Yes, but I just don't know that you want to get anything on it because then you, I don't know, I don't know what the reaction it might have might not be sure. good. I think okay. you just want to stay away from it. And you're, you're mostly, you're not touching the hair anyway. You shouldn't be anyway because you yeah. don't even want to get, get the oil from your hands on right. the hair right. as well. Sure, sure. So really, if you get anything on it, just same as everything else, just like soft cloth, but in general, just stay clear of it. Yeah. And um, Brandon even, he even said that you could use like um, water and soap on the finish of, you know, on the bow or on the violin, and that's not going to damage it either. You do want to wipe it off when you're done because you'll get like water spots probably. On the outside. So I think, yeah. I think you don't that's want the same. To get, get in on the, on the Yeah, inside. that's the same thing with like any of our other instruments too, is just if you spray anything directly on that finish, it, it's going to sit on the finish and it will do different things to mm -hmm. it. So, uh, yeah, definitely one of those critical things that we just want to be cautious of with a string instrument. And I'm sure it's the same, same with guitars and all that kind of stuff. They all have very similar finish to them. Yeah. So, um, some of the, the key points too, on these, uh, string instruments that we put together is we do have like some tuning videos. So of course the last the the, the uh, violin that we have right over here right now we took all the strings off of it so if you wanted to know how to go and put those back together kind of tune everything back up we have something for that on there um i think the most critical on these areas is you're touching this surface so it's not necessarily getting some of those molds and bacteria but still one of those things you got to be cautious of if you did get like mold in the inside of your instrument a smell or something like that any any of that type of moisture probably best that you bring it in uh it, it, you don't want to do something that's going to damage it uh you know especially if it got wet or something like that it's just one of those critical things that's a little bit more delicate to go and do on your own uh just keeping it dry though you know if you had a case that got wet take it out of the case if you have 
uh, you know, a wet area by it, just leave them out in the open so that they dry out adequately. And then just double check things to make sure that you're not getting any type of bacteria or anything like that growing on your instruments. Mm -hmm. The same thing with the cases applied, uh, with the wind instruments applied mm -hmm. to the uh, uh, a string instruments. You get something in there, it's not the easiest to get out. Yeah. And I know, uh, especially with like anything that we actually have, it's mainly strings and stuff like that. So you have these areas that you definitely want to wipe off, keep clean, especially if you're going to pass it on to another student. So just maintain where you're going to keep things at uh, as far as in, in if you're passing an instrument to another student, what they're coming in contact with. Because if they're breathing over top of the instrument, that's something that you kind of want to just make sure is cleaned off adequately enough to go to the next person. Um, as far as any of the, the critical areas, hey, just watch what watch what you're using to clean off these types of instruments. They're a little bit more delicate. Um, I think too, we kind of we have some percussion stuff maybe to kind of briefly go over too. It's the same thing with some of these types of items as we have with some of the other items, is what what you do to kind of clean off these things. Another another instrument that we're just making contact with with our hands and stuff like that. Now, one of those things that I think maybe we just didn't talk about all too much is not only are some of these instruments like something that you're touching, uh, but you know, you touch other things whenever you do this. You know, if you, you come back from lunch, you have stuff on your hands, you come back from you know, uh, playing, somebody rubs their eyes, somebody blows their nose. These types of areas definitely are where you're gonna go and contract or you know, pass around bacterias, molds, different things like that. So very critical thing with any of these types of instruments, wash your hands, keep them clean. You know, any of that disinfectant soap and all that kind of stuff is gonna help so that you're not going and give it to the next person that's going and handling it after you're done. So I say, we'll let Kyle sneak out and I'll jump back in. Thanks Kyle. Yep. Thanks Kyle. Yep. All right, so as far as percussion stuff, I know there is a ton of percussion equipment out there. Um, main thing is most of the heads that you guys are going to have in your schools are going to be, uh, you know, like a synthetic. You're not going to have natural calf skin. Um, I asked the percussion shop guys. They said, you know, most schools are going to have the synthetic stuff. So the way you would clean the head, you don't want to spray anything directly onto the drum head itself. Um, so like we were saying with everything else, um, you want to take like a, you know, like a disinfectant you don't want to have on the drum heads, you don't want anything abrasive. Like you don't want to try to use alcohol or, you know, ammonia based stuff because it'll actually, if you can see the little logo on there, it'll actually, you know, remove the, the logos that are on the drum and it'll actually etch the, the finish. So just, a, you know, like a water solution with some soap and a spray bottle. Squirt it on a rag. Yeah, I got some brushes attached to that. Uh, don't, yeah, don't don't put the brush across the drum head. Yeah, so much. you know you can wipe down the drum heads then, let it evaporate off, and then you want to go back in with a clean, dry rag. Wipe everything off because you don't want you know the chemicals to sit on there. Um, the outside of the drum, same kind of deal. You know, you just want to rub things off on the, you know. So apparently I was not in the picture there, my bad. Uh, you know, you just want to make sure you're wiping down everything. Um, now, as far as the, you know, the finish on the aluminum drum shells, you know, if you spray something on there and don't wipe it off, it's going to, you know, be all spotted. Um, you know, same with the bleach and stuff. You don't want to, you know, hit the, hit the outside of it with that. So just, you know, soapy water. And excess, or like, you know, excess the, of moisture on any of these is going to rust them up. So you want to remove that after you're done. So make sure that you keep it dry. Um, I think too with the drum heads, sometimes they'll separate if they get moisture in them. So it, yeah, so very yeah, clean. keep them keep them dry. You definitely want to use that extra rag to dry off. Um, now, as far as your sticks and mallets go, um, just spray your disinfectant right on a rag. You can wipe off the sticks, um, like bass drum mallets and marimba and stuff like that. You do not really want to get the felt wet because that will. You know, start to it'll change the density. Yeah, you know, it'll change the density. It'll make them swell. They'll start falling apart on you. So you know, try to keep those guys at a minimum. But you can clean off the sticks, which you know you shouldn't be touching the heads of those anyway. Those, um, like little like too, so. uh, little shakers and stuff like that. You do not want to submerge these 
um because they are kind of porous and the inside is you know like little brass pieces so if you're going to clean something like that just you know you can squirt a disinfectant right on them let it air dry wipe it off um now as far as symbols go um you don't want to use anything too abrasive because it'll actually mess things up so the drum shop recommended just a simple windex so ammonia base um yeah but just you know squirt it on a rag wipe off your symbol they do make specific polishes for symbols that clean but you know you guys aren't going to have that stuff probably laying around so just you know the, the windex work. the windex will be good for that um like tambourines you know if you have the synthetic stuff basically anything synthetic you can spray your disinfectant on it's not going to hurt it you don't want to be spraying anything onto like rosewood bars, for example, or if you have orf instruments in your school, um, like the metal bars, you can wipe down with whatever, um, you know, the disinfectant. You just want to make sure if it's a, you know, wood, like we were just talking with the string instruments, so the rosewood or, you know, the outside of an orf instrument, um, you don't really want to use alcohol on that because it will dry out the wood. Um, and now, if you do get stuff on there, it is good to use, um, you know, like a furniture polish, lemon, lemon oil is, is, you know, a good thing to just rehydrate the wood after you yeah, wipe every time things you dry it out. It's kind of, it's a protectant for the wood, as well as it's just going to kind of give it a nice finish. It'll keep it looking nice, but it, it will help protect it in the future too. So that, you know, it doesn't fall apart. On you. you don't want wood pieces to be on start crumbling or rotting away, any of that kind of stuff, so. So big thing with percussion, just, you know, keep the sticks clean. I mean, really, you, you know, you shouldn't be, you know, touching too much of the drum heads and things like that. So just, you know, soapy water, make sure you wipe it off afterwards. Um, drumsticks, you can wipe stuff off. Um, let's see, like keyboards, um, you know, piano keyboards and stuff like that. Uh, you don't really want to use alcohol-based um, cleaners on the keys themselves because it'll actually like you know it could crack the keys and things like that so just you know again soapy water you know you don't want the rags dripping wet you know just just a little damp um, wipe off the keys you know things like that because you don't want to get you know you don't want to squirt anything on there to get down in between uh, into the electronics um, yeah and as some of you will have like a wooden keyboard, of course. Or, well, yeah, I mean, or, or, yeah, keyboard. Keyboard. Yeah. yeah, so you got to watch that. But like, like you're saying, you want to keep any of that moisture out of the electronics. And that's where spraying into that instrument, if you get water or moisture that kind of goes down into the keyboard, that's what could damage the, the functionality of that electronic device. And I think that's the same probably too with uh, guitars and that kind of stuff. Electrical pickups, you want to stay away from all those types yeah. of things. Spray it on your rag first, then wipe off the ox tonic. Um, I think as far as it goes, like if we had any other questions or anything like that, we can kind of go over those types of things. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please feel yeah, free. Yeah, you can always feel free. And about if you do something different, let us know. Uh, it's always good for us to learn something new. Different products are available all the time that we may not even know of yet. Mm -hmm. So uh, by all means, let us know. This is just a, a nice uh, overall view of things. This is uh, stuff that we deal with all the time. But uh, and that's, so, yeah. that's the one thing we're hoping to do is we want to protect your instruments. We want to protect our instruments. And it, sometimes there's information too that if you find it somewhere, please. It, it just helps us out even more just to be more knowledgeable about everything that's kind of going on with all this. And I think a lot of these types of disinfectants and stuff like that, it's really gone crazy lately. And yeah. you're, you're hearing a lot about what this product does and what this product does. Uh, one thing we just want to make sure of too is that you're not damaging anything uh, because that, that would be the most critical at this point too is we want to keep everything clean, but we also don't want to go and damage something so that it wouldn't, it won't function or it's not going to last. If you have any questions, please feel free. Let us know. We've been trying to go and collect a lot of these types of uh, little short videos on cleaning instruments. Uh, they'll kind of go over all of our care kits. We have uh, one, hopefully for each one of the instruments that we actually have within our rental program. Uh, kind of goes over all the products that are in our care kits, tells you about what to go and use, how to use them. 
Uh, so please feel free to go and send uh, students over to that, any of that kind of stuff, and hopefully you find that helpful. Um, as far as any of the other little things that are on there too, they're basically to help you go and string an instrument, string a violin, string your, uh, your rotary valves on a French horn or a trombone. And we also have another video that's great too on trumpet stuff, how to oil the valves. What's the question? Uh, how do you deal with a sticking boot pad? Uh, ah, that's actually a really good question. I did want to kind of go over this, but we didn't get it. Jeremy, why don't you handle this one? Ooh, we'll set up over here. How do we deal with the sticking flute pad? Basically, what we're going to do is... <laughs> <laughs> Let's move some stuff around and we'll get a flute over here so you can see it. <laughs> so what we're going to do actually is hard to tell you a little bit about what you can do at home. Um, what we would do is we would take a pipe cleaner, which I don't know if we have. I actually here. don't have one here, but okay. you know, a soft cleaner that you'd run underneath there. Yeah. Yeah. And some, yeah, something soft that there's the, yeah, it gotta be very gentle. What a sticking pad is, is that is sugar. Those are the sugars from uh, that's lunch basically collecting on your pad. So that's uh, what, what we need to do is take some sort of, what we have is something that was more of an alcohol base that we will put onto a pipe cleaner and we'll gently rub that and then we will dry that off. So that's, uh, that comes back into the more important of, of uh, uh, swabbing everything out every time whenever you're done. Um, Jelly, whenever a pad starts to get sticky to the point where it's going to be causing a problem, that means it's ready for us. Um, to keep going with that, what we have here is a nice rib where all the posts are connected to. So if those posts are starting, or those ribs, well, that is where the, the dirt and oils and everything else is going to collect. We can't get to those real, you can't get to those real easy without tearing an instrument apart. So it's one of those, you got to be gentle with it. But what's right next to the those ribs? Right next to those ribs are the pads. That's where all that, that oil and junk is going to start to, to get to. So if you have, want to try this at home, um, and again, uh, if, if they're all getting that way and if it's a progressive thing, I do recommend bringing it in to us. It's a lot easier and a lot cheaper in the long run to uh, just let us go ahead and take care of everything that way, take, clean the pads off. And what we'll also do is probably disassemble an instrument at that point in time and get plenty of good oil on there uh, within the keys. What gets into those hidden areas too that are kind of hiding in the background. Sometimes they're so, tough uh, to get to. I don't really have anything right here. Um, to do it like this. This is just a, this is water or is this alcohol? alcohol? This is alcohol? Okay. So this is an alcohol. We get that, put a little bit in, even if you have a little container, dip it in there. Uh, <laughs> uh, wipe it off a little bit. You want just barely damp. Put it in there. Just move it around gently, very gently. And this is one of those things that a lot of bad can happen as well. That's another reason why we say bring it, bring it here. Because if your pad is even a little bit on the old side, it's going to, you could very easily hit that seat. The seat is where it connects to, or it touches the, the body, the tone of the instrument. That seat is the, the little, little indentation in the pad. So if they're even a little bit old and you're a little bit too rough, and uh, when I mean a little bit too rough, I mean a little bit too rough. You touch that and it will rip that seat. It'll finish the job off right there. Yeah, the pads are really, they're pretty delicate, especially on flutes and clarinets. They now this are. Is, this is a, a pad, actually this is a cigarette paper right here. They all have also what is a pad paper, which is, which is more of a short term in my mind. Um, if you have the uh, regular pad paper that does not have a powder on it, you don't want to be pulling on it. Just put it in there, dab it, dab it a little bit. You're hoping that it collects very, the dirt on Right, it. you're hoping that it collects the dirt. And as well, if yeah. you do put alcohol in, in, on, a, on a pipe cleaner and go ahead and do that, um, that is going to help dry it off a little bit quicker as well. Um, 
again, that's one of those things that, that, that it might be best just to bring it in here if it gets excessive. Now, the other paper, the other uh, pad paper that has a uh, uh, powder on it, um, good and bad. What is that powder? It's going to get onto the stickies that are there. So are we fixing anything? Just temporarily. It's where we're putting a little bit of, of sticky or uh, we're taking up that sticky. So it's not going to be touching the other, other part, other side. So that is just adding more dirt to the problem, but it's helping you today, right now, until you can get to us. Hopefully I helped out with that. <laughs> <laughs> I know the one thing about pads and cleaning them off is you wanna clean that tone hole area, you wanna clean the pad area. And just be delicate, like you're saying. That's the, they're just very delicate, and even leather, it's very delicate too. If you're wiping it off, you you run a lot of risk of going and ripping it. As well as if you change anything just a little bit too, causes you a lot of problems. Some some flutes are a little bit more delicate with that than I think uh, saxophones are. But it is one of those things that if it starts to absorb a lot of moisture, then the pad swells up. That's whenever it's not going to go and cover the tone hole the right way. So it, especially a bigger pad, it has more potential of absorbing more of that moisture into it. That's whenever you'll go and have the problem. So anything you do, a little bit, dry it off as best you can after you're done. There's a good example of drying things off and why. So we're looking at the right hand here. All these are open, okay? So if you dry those off, you notice know, so that these don't get quite as sticky as this one right here, because this one is closed all the time. It does it, it not have that, it's not afforded that opportunity to dry quite as well. I know that that's, uh, that's one of those key areas, especially on the, the saxophone. Yeah. Uh, clarinet has the same thing where you have some pads that are always closed. Um, the one area that that actually, or the one thing that that actually is, is it's just that void where it just collects in. So whenever you're running your swab through different things like that, sometimes that's one of those key areas that you have to address just because they're going to collect a lot of that moisture, holds it in there. And then it goes back to, to the cleaner you keep your mouthpiece, your necks, your barrels, that's going to, you know, pre not prevent that from happening, but it will make it, it definitely happen helps. slower, you know, it, goes, it, won't, it won't, you know. That goes all back to the number one, the number one repair maintenance trick. Drink of water before you play. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Any way that you can minimize that salt, the sugars, especially if somebody just ate it, that's going to be the most key yeah, thing is just, just kind of rinsing that off. Of course, washing your hands, because that's where you're going to go and find a lot of that stuff, you know, gets in the tone holes. You're touching the keys on a flute, open hole flute, even a clarinet. Any of that stuff's going to build up, potentially could change intonation on your instrument. So, you know, what, there's some of those key areas. Do we have any other questions? So, like I said, <laughs> if you have any other questions, please feel free. Let us know. The shop's always open. Hopefully, you can come and give us a call, drop us an email. Uh, we'd be glad to go and answer them for you. And especially if you wanted to know more information, have uh, different videos put up, all that stuff, we're definitely very open to. And we want to know what you need to know just to help you out, uh, whether it be just information on how to go and clean your instrument a different way, uh, an instrument that we didn't go over, or, you know, just minor adjustments. How do you handle different things? We're trying to go and keep all of this stuff out there so that you guys are educated as, as well as you can, just so that you know what to do in these types of problem areas. When you need us and when you don't need us. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, we can do that. So the yeah, question is how to do oil, properly oil the French mm -hmm. horn and trumpet valves. And uh, like we were saying earlier, we have a great video. It's uh, currently on how to do the trumpet valves goes into a little bit of detail, but uh, it is one of those things that we always, we always have, uh, you know, different information to go and get out there. Yeah. All right. So for a trumpet, um, you want to do a couple of the valves here. So you want to unscrew. I recommend doing one at a time. That way, you know, you don't get things confused. So you want to pull the valve out 
straight. You don't want to do a twisting motion because if there is any dirt inside the valve, that will actually put scratches in the instrument or inside the valve in like a sideways you know, motion here. And then when more dirt builds up in there, that uh, will cause it to stick. So you want to pull the valve straight out and then you want to just take your valve oil. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Pull the valve out, take a clean rag, you want to wipe off the valve. Then you want to take your valve oil and just want to put a couple little drops, get it, make sure you, you know, hit all the spots on there. Then you want to go straight back in. You want to make sure uh, on here there's the uh, the valve guide. And then I don't know if we can get a picture of this. Oh, yeah, actually, you can. can you yeah, hang on, you'll focus it up a little bit. Do I need to change my angle yeah, a little bit? A little bit down, right up. Down Sorry. Right there, there we go. There you go. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little slot down in there. And that's where the valve guide sits. So, yeah, I can't really, really see it. <laughs> anyway, but, um, so, but anyway, there's a little slot. The valve guide goes right in there. So you want to put the valve straight very back down in. Very slowly. Yeah, you don't want to do the, you know, like I said, you don't want to put it in and spin it a bunch of times, but you want to, you know, you do need to click it into place. And then re-put down your top cap. And then just work the valve a couple of times to you know make sure the oil gets all over it. So big key things, do one at a time. You don't want to do a twisting motion. You want to pull the valve straight out, wipe it off, put your new oil on, straight back down in. You don't want to do a twisting like we said because that'll actually if there's anything in there, it'll scratch the valve casing and the valve, and then that will make the valve stick more because then you know whenever the salts and stuff go through the instrument that you're playing, they'll build up in those spots. So if it's more of a straight up and down, it, you know, it won't make it bind up as much. Whenever you're telling a kid how to do this, whenever you're teaching, teaching a kid how to do this, I, I usually tell them to do it in their lap. That way they have more control over it. You don't always have a table or they're sitting in, their, in, in class or whatever. Do it in your lap and that way they, they can do one thing at a time with it. And definitely do one thing at a time. Like we, we, whenever somebody comes in and this is their instrument doesn't play at all, normally because they got a valve in the wrong valve port. And it's one of those types of things that it'll definitely help you out just doing one at a time, no rushing. It is one of those types of deals that you don't need to worry about quite as much uh, with uh, any of the, any of the other instruments. But whenever you go and you're, you're trying to go and put together these instruments or take them apart, it's just very simple to go and just do one, make sure you wipe it off and then put it all back together. Then you don't go and mix them up. Okay, now, so for the French horn rotor, this is gonna be the same for if you have a rotor valve tuba or you have attachment on a trombone. So there is a special oil. Um, it is key in rotor oil. So basically it's just a thicker valve oil. The stuff you use on trumpets is you know a real thin oil it'll work in a pinch though. yeah it'll work in a pinch you're actually going to use both kinds while doing this um but there's a specific you know like i said a thicker oil so the way you oil this is there is a cap on the bottom of the the valve so that's the one side the other side here so we're going to take the cap off and then right in the middle there you want to take your valve oil, the key oil, sorry, and you go right around the bearing right there. So it sticks through the bearing plate. You can see that spinning right there. So you want to put a little bit of the key oil there. And you want to put your cap back on. Sometimes a little trick to putting the cap on, which oh, not always helps. <laughs> you turn it backwards. Yes, it's that's right. what it's I was trying to do. There, yeah. See if you go go to the left just a little bit, you'll hear a click of it of the popping into the threads. All right, and then the other places you want to put the oil right underneath the stop arm. So this is the the stop plates right here. Has the little rubber stops on it. They could be cork. They could be rubber. The stop arm 
is what stops the valve from going. So right underneath the stop valve, there is a little gap. So you actually want to take the, the key oil. Let's see if I can get in here. And that goes my hand blocking it. And you want to get the oil right inside there. And then, you know, just work the valve a couple times again. So again, take this, uh, the back half off. And then right on the bearing. And then right underneath the stop arm. That's where you put the oil again. And then last place for the, the key oil, the rotor oil, it would be right on. Send it back a little bit. Uh, oops, sorry about that. Right on the screw for the for the levers. So right on the edges of those. And then that'll that'll soak down in there. So not only will it make the valves work better, but it'll actually cut down on a lot of the noise too. Um, and then the last thing you want to do is just take your regular valve oil, pull out your slide. And then you just want to put a couple drops down the leg. Just go throw them there. And then you just want to work the valve a little bit. So that'll actually get some oil in the inside of the valve. But the main part that you want to keep where the you know the surfaces that touch are the bearing surfaces. So right here and right underneath the stop arm. But that other oil inside there just keeps things clean and you know keeps it moving pretty good for you. And like I said, that would be the same for, um, you know, trombone. Now, if you have the mechanical linkage, this one has the string on it. So if you have the mechanical linkage, there's going to be like two more spots you're going to want to put the oil. So you're going to use the, the rotor key oil. There'll be like a spot over here. Just, you know, you, you can see it where it'll be moving. There'll be like another little screw in there. Um, so those are the those are the spots you'd want to hit. So they'll probably be like one here and then like another little arm here. Just anywhere where you know it's moving back and forth. You want to put that key oil. All right, hopefully that helped. And like Mike said, there is um, a video online where we actually like you know show you how to oil the valves and uh, how to do the string how to, too, string how to, how to retie the how to retie the string oh, and it does have on there too which is actually a really good one is greasing the slides and i know it seems very simple in in some cases but you know some individuals just want to know this type of information so we definitely uh we're trying to cover those types of things and i greasing the slides is just keeping keeping them from getting stuck so you can put your instrument back in tune um i think we have another slide. question okay First question is how often does this need to be done? And second question is what if the valves or rotors are frozen? Uh, yeah, and those are the critical ones. There's yeah, a couple if, different ways to look at that. Yeah, if the if the so if the valves are frozen, um, it depends on why. Yeah, it yeah. depends why. Um, now, if it's over the summer, they're say they're sitting in the school. Um, sometimes you can just try to break them loose real yep. quick. That, okay, what that is, is, is hopefully, hopefully <laughs> what that is, is the oil drying up. That's the imperfections and everything mm -hmm. that is in there. It's just kind of gumming things up. And oil will dry. So oil it is, will dry. It, it, does it, dry, it yeah. is one of those types of things that it kind of gets almost like gummy sticky. And that, that'll cause you, and then I'll do it on the grease slides too. That's why we use a really, really thick base grease on the slides because it, it'll maintain its viscosity a little bit longer. Valve oil is a lot thinner. So yeah, valve oil is thinner. It dries yeah, that's out. That's the good side. That's, yeah, that's the good side. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's if the good side. So, there. but like you don't want to force things too much. So with the valves, you can you know sometimes get it to push down. You don't want to force it too hard because, like we were saying earlier, if the corrosion's real bad on it, then you're actually going to scratch the valve exactly and the valve casing itself, and then you're in a you know whole other thing. Get that that oil in all the spots. So if you have if you have like if you, one of one of the valves is just hanging up, try pulling out the slide. Put a little bit of oil in there, you know, the second slide, any of that kind of stuff. Get as much in there as you can and see if that helps clean up your problem. 
Um, and then you can, now this is more dangerous, so I wouldn't recommend doing this. Um, you don't want to try to pound the valve out from yeah. the bottom. We get a lot in that, you know, someone will stick a screwdriver in the bottom of the valve and it actually will just stab right through. So yeah, if you do little holes not made for that <laughs> need to um, like we have, um, I mean, we can make things for people too. We have like, you know, we can make like when we have our brass repair clinic in the store, we, you know, handed out little um, like drumstick dowel rods. So if you do need to attempt to Put push the valve out from the bottom, <laughs> you want to make sure whatever you're sticking down in there is the exact diameter. You don't want anything smaller because it will actually shove through the bottom. That's just soldered on. And then it'll actually stab right through the ports of the valve. So I wouldn't recommend doing that, but like if you're in a pinch, like Jeremy was saying, it might not be like super stuck. So you can actually kind of like push it out from the bottom. Um, and then once you do get it out, then you would want to We have, uh, there's like a cleaning rod. You can actually use the same, basically, as like the flute cleaning rod too. It has the little, you know, slot in the top of it. So you just want to, same as what you did on the flute, stick the rag through, wrap it around a couple times. And that's just to protect the top because you don't want to scratch to the inside the top. Of the and then, you know, just clean out, any muck clean out the stuff that's in there, wipe off the valve. Put, new put new valve oil on but like we said i mean it, it, it gets to a certain point where you know like the dawn dish soap isn't going to cut it mm -hmm. so unfortunately like at that point you would need to bring it in but a lot of the times or if there's damage that, that, that's well yeah if there's damage yeah but a lot of the time if you can break it free because a easily. lot of the times it is yeah easily it is just the valve oil dried up um, we find that a lot with um, like concert tubas, for example, that sit over the summer that aren't used during marching season. Um, necessarily get cleaned and oiled. Yeah, that, you know, that aren't oiled. Um, so a good way to prevent that from happening, um, I know it's, you know, a pain. I get everyone's busy. But if you occasionally, um, you know, every every couple weeks, you know, just, just check on your brass instruments. I know that, like I said, I know that's a pain. Maybe you can get like a section leader or something like that to do it. Just make sure the valves are working, throw some oil on. Um, good thing for slides that from preventing them getting stuck. If they're moving, just go move them every once in a while. Just, you know, walk over to your brass instrument, move it, pull the slide out, put it back in. That'll prevent the slides from sticking. Um, that was for real, real quick, just yeah. to ask me since you do this more often, uh, do you recommend um, if there's an instrument that isn't going to be played maybe for a year in a school setting, uh, do you recommend leaving the slides out just a little bit? Um, I would, yeah, I would recommend leaving the slides out a little bit just in case they do get stuck. It is much easier to get them pulled out. Um, also with, um, you know, valves and things like that, if you can actually take them apart, how we just did get them out and clean them, it would be okay to keep them dry over the summer. Um, so, you know, before you're done, like I said, I know that's a pain, um, but, you know, just wipe off the valve, wipe out the inside of the valve casing, um, and then, you know, it can, it can just sit dry over the summer, and that'll actually prevent a lot of the stuff, too. Now, with the French horns, these are much more delicate. Um, to break it free when it's stuck, you don't want to push down on the lever, because that'll actually bend the levers. And they'll be all out of uh, out of adjustment. So if you can do it safely, and you're comfortable enough, you want to switch me over here real quick. Yep. Um, so you can see on the bottom, we were talking about that stop arm. That's right there. If you do want to try to break it free, that's where you want to grab it. You don't want to grab the arm, the lever. You want to try to physically get your hand on that's the stop to the arm because that's that's directly yeah. connected to the valve and you want to try to break it free because a lot of the time the you know the green buildup that happens the corrosion just builds up on the valve like we were saying and then it just kind of you know that's what makes it stick so if you can get it to break free you don't want to use 
really any kind of plier on that. You don't want to use anything with, um, you know, teeth on the jaws. Um, even if you do have a flat jawed plier, it's still a pretty dangerous maneuver. So if you snap it off or bend it. Yeah, unfortunately with the, you know, the, the, yeah, <laughs> the, the rotor valve. So anything, <laughs> yeah, anything, basically you just want to try with your hands. If you can't break it free, you know, and a lot of the times too, if you send it in and it is something simple like that, like we can just break it free. If it breaks free, you know, we'll send it back to you, no charge. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a lot less hassle though than, you know, shoving a screwdriver through the bottom of the valve because you got it stuck and you're trying to pound <laughs> it out. Pieces are bad. So like yeah. I said, you know, just use your fingers. You just want to grab the stop arm itself and try to break it free. And then once it is moving, if you get it moving, you know, then, you know, pull your slide out, dump some valve oil down, work it a couple times, get the, the thicker rotor key oil I think for the other sides. And that will, you know, I think that probably get brings us to two, and we didn't even touch on it. Uh, maybe a stuck mouthpiece. Oh, yeah. We don't, I don't think we have Yeah, because I, I don't have anything here, but like, that's the one about. that everybody talks to us about, too. You get a stuck slide, you get a stuck valve, but the stuck mouthpiece. And sometimes what you end up finding is, you know, that's just how clean is the, the back of the, the mouthpiece itself? How clean is the receiver? That kind of stuff. So those types of areas are, you know, one of those things that you actually want to keep as clean as possible. Um, they're stuck and they're stuck. Yeah. They're, they're stuck as it took a, a hit to push it in and expand the metal. And they're stuck as there's enough corrosion in there that there's that it's acting like sandpaper on both sides keeping it in. And you can, you know, counteract that as best you can, but like in the receiver part itself, if it got a little bit of this funk in there, that's going to go and get your mouthpiece stuck. And that fitting is so tight that it's one of those things, critical area to keep clean. Make sure that you're, you're if you're cleaning off the whole mouthpiece, dunk the whole thing, scrub it down and cl really clean that area and wipe it off. That, that'll help out a lot with stuck mouthpieces. And we pull mouthpieces for free. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Don't, don't try to go and pull it out with pliers. Stop in because we'll just pull it out. <laughs> yeah, and then that goes back to as well, keeping the lead pipe clean. How Mike was just saying there. So, you know, if you run the water through here occasionally or just, you know, even run the brush through it. Helps out a lot. Will help out a lot with that. So as long, you know, that'll help keep that receiver clean. You don't have a cleaning schedule. Yeah. Did we answer both questions? Uh, how often do they need the oil valves and rotors? Ah, yeah. The the unfortunately the best answer for that is when you need to. Uh, with students, it's a good recommendation to just go through and say, hey, anytime you play, um, every time they're you play, they're yeah. they're not going to be cleaning it as regularly as maybe they should. So anytime they play, and and even if the oil is only going to be there to help wash out some of that dirt off the valve. Um, anytime they play, not necessarily with French horn, with French horn, the, the, the lighter valve oil in through the, the slide legs, maybe that. Yeah. Um, but uh, with the trumpet, I usually, I would usually say anytime they play. Yeah. You're um, not, you're not going to hurt a brass instrument by oiling too much. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can over oil, you know, meaning you're Other putting way too mess. much on it. It'll sound time. like you're playing in a little bit of water. Um, but yeah, but you, you can't, yeah, you can't, <laughs> you can't over oil about like if you if you would put it on every day every time you play that's not going to hurt the instrument um but like we said they just you know the valve oil is a thinner oil so it it does dry out so you know if they play on tuesday and don't play again till thursday you know you want to you know be putting oil on that's really the same thing with the trump on a slide yeah um you, every once in a while yeah you want to take it all off take it wipe everything off clean clean the uh clean the inside as the uh, uh, outside slide, I'm sorry, as good as possible. And then reapply everything, get your water bottle or however you're doing it. Um, that goes old too, gets old too. And I think it lends itself to some woodland stuff too. Uh, you know, it, greasing your corks, yeah, it's gonna keep the instrument from getting stuck together. What greasing the corks does for a woodwind instrument, just like it does for uh, brass instruments. But uh, what it's actually doing too, is it's keeping the cork soft so that it doesn't dry out and get hard so that it falls apart for one, or the instrument gets stuck together. 
uh, or it's too loose, one of the two, because as soon as it loses that moisture, it won't go and expand to go and fit within like the, the region where it's supposed to go into the other side of the tenant. Uh, and I think uh, some of the, the stuff that a lot of people do is they'll put on too much cork grease and too much slide grease, too much oil. It, wipe off these things because you just don't want to have goopy slide grease all over the place. You'll drop your instrument. You don't want cork grease all over your instrument because you'll drop your instrument Get on the pads. Yeah, yeah. You don't want it on the pads either. So it's one of those things that yeah, you're going to put it on and apply it, but excess needs to be wiped off, and it'll it'll definitely help you out in the long run. Um, well, one more. Sure. All right. Um, best method for cleaning and sanitizing ceramic and sock mouthpieces, and maybe we can talk about the difference between sterosol and mighty mist and those cleaners as far as uh, yeah, patients. yeah, we can go back into that. Yeah, yeah. So, like we were uh, kind of touching on just earlier, uh, essentially mouthpieces. Well, unfortunately, that one got that a one. little was soaking in the uh, in that the water one, a little bit with in. the cork, but <laughs> uh, critical areas, tip of the mouthpiece, the backboard of the mouthpiece. We want to get all those areas clean. We want to get them disinfected. We want to remove all the oil, grease, spit, saliva, all that kind of stuff that's getting all over the instrument. So just like with the brass stuff, good soaking is good. Uh, use a little bit of Dawn soap. That works great. Um, yeah, yeah. you just want to use the Dawn. Um, now, the, the difference between, like we were saying, the, the Sterosol, which is the red cleaner, and the Mighty Mist, um, Mighty Mist is good for, well, let's put it away. Sterosol is good for everything. It's not going to damage anything. You can use it on woodwind mouthpieces. You can use it to clean. I believe it's peroxide. Yeah, you can use it to clean your reeds. You can use it to clean your oboe reeds, your bassoon reeds. Um, you know, everything. It doesn't, cause, yeah, it doesn't cause a lot of problems um, with any of the plastics. It doesn't cause problems yeah. with wood. And it doesn't cause problems with the... Uh, hard rubber uh so then you got your alcohol yeah so yeah the mighty mist tastes much better yeah it's, <laughs> it's the, you know, the, like the, the minty green one um works really well but it's the alcohol based one so it actually when it gets on the hard rubber mouthpieces will actually cause oxidation oxidation and you know harm to the mouthpiece so you you want to try to stay away from yeah there we go so this is uh so you can a kind of see the oxidation here so, oh, it's a two-toned one. I didn't even so notice that one. We actually clean this up because we actually can clean up your mouthpieces for you. But as you can see, they turn green, orange, uh, and hard rubber is prone to do that even whenever you're playing because the, the acids in your mouth are very similar of, the, of like just alcohol and different things like that. And then we're also carrying this stair spray now too. This one is also, right, this one's not alcohol. Yeah, this yeah. one's alcohol free as well. So this one will be you know, interchangeable with your, you know, your sterosol. This, so this, these two are anything, you know, you can clean basically anything with these, with, the, with these two. How much is that? 395? Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. 379. Yeah. Um, now, as far as the, the rubber mouthpieces, we don't want to use soap and water on those, correct? Don't you well, want to use a... they're going to oxidize. Or you don't want to like... You still need to clean them. Soak them. But yeah. is that where you can do the, like the peroxide and water and vinegar and water for it, those ones, right? It does work best. Now, what we end up doing or recommend doing is, you know, cleaning it off. Uh, so if you did have to soak it, use soap and water, scrub it out. And those critical areas, like on a saxophone clarinet mouthpiece, you're getting in there because you want to get into all those little crevices. So soaking sometimes is the best way to go and do it. After you're done, sometimes you need to condition it a little bit with oil. Um, now, what that means is essentially you know, you wash the mouthpiece off, but just to kind of rejuvenate some of that on the outside, which is kind of what we did on this mouthpiece, is you're going to go and, you know, clean it up. It's going to oxidize and turn brown a little bit. But if you go and you add a little bit of oil to it and kind of polish that in there, it, it kind of helps bring back some of that black. But a lot of players, clarinet saxophone players, they'll complain that it kind of tastes bad whenever it oxidizes. And that's one of those types of things that'll help counteract that a little bit. So a little bit of mineral oil? That's what we've been using, mm -hmm. uh, but you can use a lot of types of oils. Natural oils are good, as well as um, oils. yeah, like e either lemon. Um, we've uh, used um, what other oils do we have around? There's some other stuff too. It just works well to protect it after the fact. 
I think as far as oils go too, one one that we didn't really talk about at all is like just oiling the body of an instrument. Don't know if you'll run across it all too much, but uh, we have like a little display here and essentially it's an instrument body that has been oiled and an instrument body that, you know, is just used, has a little bit of mold and mildew, different things like that in it. After you scrub off like a wooden instrument or a plastic instrument, sometimes these are things that we have to go and look at. Um, I know with this body here, I think it's a little bit out of focus though. Oh, I've, um, like you can see, uh, we cleaned it out so that you get rid of some of these molds and stuff like that. So you're you're talking about like, you know, cleaning out the inside, taking a swab through it, a little bit of alcohol and swabbing out the inside of the instrument. But then the critical thing is, is you just want to kind of protect it after it's done. So a little bit of oil and that'll kind of help go and protect it after it's done. So in a lot of those cases, people are like, hey, how much oil? How do I oil? Different things like that. Essentially, what you're looking at is you're going to take your cleaning rag. Sometimes it's good to have an old one around so that like whenever you're doing it, you're not going and ruining your rag that you use all the time. But all you need to do is just a little bit of whatever type of oil you're using right on the top of the rag and then just pull it right through the instrument itself. And that's going to help just kind of line the inside. So you're just looking for it to kind of whenever you actually put uh, oil on a wooden instrument, you're kind of looking for it to kind of get like that little sheen to it. So it a little goes a long way. way. Yeah, it does not take much because you don't want to get it on your pads. Right, right. A little goes a very long way. It, it is uh, like the, the most critical part of the instrument is those pads. So just watch how much oil you actually do on there. Just a couple little drops and then run it through your horn. And that, that was a bass clarinet, but you know, it's the same for any type of wooden instrument, piccolos, uh, clarinet, bass clarinets, bassoons even too, they need oiled a little bit. And that's just to go and protect those woods after it's all done. And especially if you have somebody that's playing it uh, and passing it on to maybe another student because some of those bigger instruments, not everybody has one. Those are those critical areas that are gonna have mold and different things like that from somebody going and playing it. Bassoons is something we didn't talk about with the yeah. swabs. Um, basically the same way with the, you want a bigger, bigger type of swab and um, put it, and especially with the boot joint, put it down through the, yeah. the big end. Get your weight good now through the small end and back out. And that's the same thing you, you, uh, with those types of instruments, even though it's uh, a different type of wood, a little bit of alcohol, uh, a little bit of the sterosol on your swab, spray it a little bit, and then just swab that through the instrument. That's going to go and help disinfect the inside of it. And I think uh, for the most part, that pretty much covered everything. I hope. <laughs> it, it is one of those types of things like we said if you have other questions feel free to ask uh send it to us via email or on facebook because we'd gladly like to go and get a response from somebody and then we can answer it right through the platform and then other people can see the answer to that question as well uh it is one of those types of things that uh sometimes a little bit of knowledge just goes a long way and we're hoping that the this goes and helps you out so i guess uh at this point we're going to say have a good afternoon and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Thanks guys. Thanks everyone. See ya.